What is up ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's your boy Goblin, and today we're coming in with an absolute hoot and a holler of a video. Hope you guys enjoy this one, drop a like if you do, and also, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and go follow me on Instagram at GBLN420. I'm going to be following a few people back tonight, so all you got to do is smash follow, the link will be at the very top of the description, go show me some love and I'll follow a few people back. Also, real quick before we dive into the video, let's take a moment for our sponsor. Even though the fantasy football season is over, you can keep the excitement alive with MyBookie's Double Deposit Bonus. Head over to MyBookie and sign up using code GOBLIN today, and you can have your initial deposit matched up to 1000 It's like playing every game with the home field advantage. All you have to do is sign up, use code GOBLIN, and get credited to your account instantly so you can start having fun on MyBookie. With the postseason in full swing, there's never been a better time to hop on. So head over to MyBookie and sign up using code GOBLIN today. Big shout out to them, and without further ado, let's dive into the video. Also, once again, follow me on Instagram, man, for real. I, I need more followers on there, man. They banned my old one. I'm so blown. I was so close to 100k. But either way, all right. Back on topic. So, this took place a few years ago back in 2019, during the peak of my cocaine usage. I went through like a few little mini binges in my life. I wouldn't even really call them binges. More so phases where I did a fair amount of blow. But this was the, really the epitome of my coke use. The summer of 2019, for those of you guys who haven't been around the channel that long, was an absolutely insane period of my life. And I have a whole series called Cocaine Chronicles that documents this. That if you haven't seen it yet, I encourage you to go watch it after this video. But... Either way, at this point, I had just been up all night the night prior doing blow. And of course, I was not staying home at my mom's house. I was crashing at a red roof inn. But I was bored out of my mind. Now, it was a common occurrence back then for me to rent out a red roof with a couple of friends to split it so we could have it as a spot to hang out. The fire alarms never went off so we could smoke as many blunts as we wanted. Half of the people there were prostitutes, so we were the least of the staff's concern, just smoking a little weed and doing a little blow. And also, it was just a nice private area to hang out. You know, looking back at it now, it makes me laugh, saying like, yeah, the Red Roof Inn is a fire fucking function spot. But it really was, and we hung out there fairly often. So on this particular night, I had been at the Red Roof, and I had rented out the room, so everyone else had left and gone home at this point. But my mom didn't want me to come home, because we'd just gotten in an argument the day before. This was also a fairly common thing, but most of the time I had somewhere to be all night anyways, so I didn't really care. I would be occupied and doing shit with friends or at least be at someone's crib but on this particular night i was just up all night getting geeked until i ran out of blow around like six or seven in the morning now this was a painful experience because a my coke man is not up and serving at six or seven a.m so i am frantically hitting up everyone i can think of that might be awake and my hopes were not high i had no weed on me at this point because you know, when I was doing blow, I didn't really feel the urge to smoke a lot. I would only really smoke when, like, it was a necessity, when I was coming down off the blow, and I really, really needed to smoke to kind of smooth that out. But other than that, it's not like I would rail a line and then immediately want to smoke. I would sometimes, yeah, fairly often, but it wasn't really a necessity, so... I think this was the point in my life where I probably smoked the least weed besides when I was on probation, at least since I had started smoking. But either way, I was hitting up everyone I could possibly think of, and no one was answering. I hit up Michael, no one picks up. I, I hit up everybody. I'm hitting up Cody, Kyle, no one answers. Until finally, Nathan answers. Now, for those of you guys who have watched my Cocaine Chronicle series, you might remember that Nathan was a fairly common character there. He was someone that at this point in my life I hung out with really often because he was always awake at really weird times. I thought it was cool, but now I came to realize it's just because he doesn't do anything except for like stimulants or, or psychedelics, all of those keep you awake, and then he sits in his garage and drinks beer. 
But that was the perfect kind of guy that I, you know, I really wanted to kick it with at that point, right? I was like, fuck yeah. Nowadays, I think he's doing other stuff. I think he's actually doing better. But I haven't, I haven't hung out with him in a very long time. But at this point, that was all he did, which was just like me and just like my friends. So I was like, hell yeah, you know? Uh, Nathan replies to me, finally, and I'm so happy. I'm like, dude, what are you on right now? Please let me come over. He's like, yeah, man, you know, you can come through. I'm here with Dan. Now, Dan is someone who I've talked about in a few of my past videos, but he's a guy who he makes his own music. And he's the guy, I think I've mentioned this in my videos, but he plays his own music nonstop at like every function. Now, I have no problem with people who make music. You know, do your thing, bro. I don't even care if it's good or bad. Doesn't matter to me. But when you're playing it nonstop every time I'm around you, then it's a problem. Like, imagine if you're hanging out with me, right? Like, you invite me over to the sesh. I fucking slide through and immediately ask for the remote. You're like, yeah, sure, man. I go on the YouTube app and I put my videos on him. He sit there for two hours just listening to my videos. And I'm like, oh, yeah, this is a funny part, guys. Shut up and listen. Listen, dude. I, I could never wrap my mind around why this guy would do this. But at the same time, I had no choice. I had nowhere else to go. So I had Nathan back and I'm like, yeah, I'll link up with you and the fucking rapper guy who never stops playing his own shit. I immediately hop in the whip and I ride on over there. Now I get over to Nathan's house maybe 10 or 15 minutes later. And I had absolutely nothing except for a little bit of money. I had no weed. I had no coke left. I was fucked. I went over there just hoping that there was something there. I didn't even ask Nathan if he had bud. I just crossed my fingers and drove. I was like, you know, bare minimum, maybe you'll have a couple beers I could grab. You know, like whatever, let's go. So I drive over to Nathan's house and I get there. And sure enough, it's him and Dan sitting in the garage. And they're sitting in the garage, and I join them, and of course, Dan's playing his music. But luckily, he shuts it off fairly soon after I got there. I think he shut it off pretty quickly, because a couple weeks prior to this, Kyle kind of went off on him for playing his music too much. He was just like, dude, your music is shit, you gotta turn it off. And Dan got really offended by that. So, for a brief period, I mean very brief, he got a little better about it. Like, when we'd come around, he'd turn it down a little bit and let people actually play their own music, which was just so fantastic of him. But either way, I get over there, and there is a million empty beer cans on the table. I could tell very quickly that these two bastards are drunk. Now, another reason that I hadn't mentioned yet that I kicked it with Nathan a lot is because he would always buy coke either from me or from the same people as me. So it always worked out well because when I wanted to match on lines with someone, Nathan was a fantastic candidate because he had his own money. I don't, I don't even know how, dude. I never figured out how he had money because he never had work to go to, but he had plenty of money. I never figured that out. I don't know. He was hustling something, I guess. But either way, we're sitting in Nathan's garage and we're chilling out. And he's absolutely wasted. Same with Dan. But they're also doing blow. They've got this big mirror that Nathan has laid out in the garage. And there's just lines on lines. Just like the, the residue of these lines. There's still like four or five lines left on this, this fucking mirror. But there's also residue all over it. I can clearly tell they've been getting geeked all night. So I'm getting a little excited. I'm like, yo, what's going on here? Nathan tells me that he doesn't really have much coke left and he doesn't really want to sell his, which I understand. But I needed to get fucked up. So I'm like, bro, what have you got? Do you have any weed? Do you have any drinks? Like, do you have anything I could buy or, or something like that? You know, what, what's the play for me? And I asked the same thing of Dan. Now Nathan's like, hold on, I'll be right back. He goes inside to his house, and while he's inside of his house grabbing whatever he was about to grab, I'm talking to Dan for a little bit, and I'm like, so Dan, how's shit been going? You know, how's the, what have you been up to tonight? How's the music stuff been going? Because this guy always tells the craziest stories. It's never just like, oh yeah, music's been going well, I'm working on a new project or a new song. He would always just pull out the craziest shit and be like, dude, I think I'm going to link with Drake soon. And I'd be like, okay, shut the fuck up. No, you're not. Like, he'd just say some crazy ass shit. He'd be like, bro, you wouldn't believe it. Lil Dirk just called me. He said, I'm Lil Dirk too. 
Like, he would just say the dumbest fucking shit. So I very quickly stopped talking to him about his music. And finally, Nathan comes back outside, and he's, you know, he sits back down, and he pulls a nice little piece of parchment paper with some goop in between it out of his pocket. And he goes, I don't really have any flour, but I've got some dookie shatter. I remember that's exactly how he put it, because he was being brutally honest. He, this was not fantastic concentrate. Me and Nathan went to the same guy to grab our blow, but definitely not our our THC products, because my god, this guy busted out some bullshit. But I was desperate to get some sleep in at this point. I was just absolutely tired out of my mind, but I was, I was at that point where my nose hurt, my whole face hurt from being up all night doing blow, and no matter how tired I really knew I was, I just couldn't fall asleep. I was like, Nathan, bro... You gotta do me a solid, man. Like, like, serve me some of this. Let's take some fat dabs. Now, luckily, he had a rig on him, but it was absolutely filthy. I am I feel that, you know, I'm fairly on point about cleaning my rigs and my bangers, you know? Uh, it's always important to have a Q-tip with alcohol on it after every dab in your banger, you know? It's important to clean out your rig, switch the water often. I, I'm big on that kind of stuff. But a lot of my friends never were. I'm talking, I've hit some absolute abomination rigs. In particular, my friend Kyle. His banger is like pitch black almost every dab he takes. Absolutely rancid. And Nathan was not too far off from that. I end up buying a gram from him of this absolute boo-boo. He scales it out, and luckily, this is the kind of shit that you were able to really shape and form with your hands really easily. So it's pretty easy to scale it out for me. I remember he might have even packed a little fat for me, like an extra .05 or a .1 or something, which, hey, shout out to Nathan for that. Meanwhile, Dan is sitting there, but now he's just playing regular music off his playlist, not his own music, which was a much, much better vibe. I was totally cool with that, because, you know, a very common guest at Nathan's house was the Flat Earth Girl, and I was just grateful she wasn't there, because whenever you gave her any cocaine, she'd lose her fucking mind and start trying to convince you that the Illuminati's real. I don't give a shit if they're real, I'm just here to get fucked up, and she's trying to convince me that aliens control the Illuminati. I don't give a shit like shut up i'm very glad she wasn't there if you guys have watched a few of my past videos you're very familiar with her and especially nathan but i'm very glad she wasn't there it was a much calmer vibe at nathan's place this time which i really appreciated but either way i had this grandma boo boo shatter now and nathan still had plenty left and i believe dan even had a little bit of his own they were all taking dabs of the shit throughout the night while they were doing blow but I guess they didn't have enough to really chop any more than the lines they had left on the mirror, so they cleared them pretty quick and gave me a little bump, which I gladly took. They were like, yo, you could take, like, yeah, a little a little corner or whatever's left on the mirror and gum it if you want, which I happily obliged. I was like, yep, give me that shit. I was feeling a little more awake now, but also I knew that I needed to get stoned. It was all or nothing. So I opted to take a fairly small dab of this shit that I just got and see how it was. Nathan passed me his absolutely filthy encrusted rig. He passed me his torch and his tool, all the shit I needed to dab, and his carb, which was also disgusting and coated in goop, and I took my dab. Now... By the time I'd already heated up the banger enough, the dab was just completely smoking, and it smelled awful. It smelled like the bottom of a charcoal grill. So I knew this was about to be rough, but when I dropped this dab, I wasn't quite ready for the complete lack of a punch that this gave me. I think the roughness was more from the, the leftover goop in the fucking banger than it really was from the dab I had just dropped. Because it was rough on my throat, but I didn't get that good lung punch that a dab gives you, you know? I dropped a fairly fat dab. I'd say what I put in was probably a point one, give or take, so it was fairly fat. And when I dropped that in there, I just didn't feel any sort of like, oh shit, any sort of like, damn, you know? I more so just felt a real, really scratchy feeling in my throat, and it felt like shit. I started coughing a lung up from this, and I realized pretty quickly that taking tiny dabs of this wasn't going to get me anywhere, because I didn't feel a thing off that. That was supposed to be like a point one, but I did not feel any fucking different except for a scratchier throat and a headache. So Nathan takes a dab after me, and then Dan takes a little dab of what he has left. And we're chilling out chatting for like maybe five or ten more minutes. 
And I'm like, Dan, let's go, let's go crazy. Let's do something fun. Let, let's have a hoot. It's 6 a.m. I need to go to sleep. Let's take a fat dab. Now, Dan's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Nathan's intrigued, too. I'm like, Dan, throw in what you got left with the rest of mine, and we'll take it all in one dab. Nathan's like, you're fucking crazy, dude. I don't know how I feel about this. You know, Nathan, he, he's not too sure about this. But I'm like, bro, what do we have to lose? Just match, like, whatever Dan and I combine to, or a little less. Who cares? I know that I'm throwing all of mine, and that's it. So we all lay out our pieces of parchment paper on the table, and we're sorting out how much concentrate we have. I get mine on the piece of parchment paper. Dan takes all of his and puts it on my piece of paper. And Nathan takes a very sizable chunk and throws it all onto mine. Now, we've got quite a large pile of goop. We didn't bother scaling it because we weren't really curious. But I'd estimate this was probably about two grams. Because I'd only taken one dab out of my gram and I contributed my whole thing. Dan had probably a solid .3 or .4 left. He had a little less than, you know, a fair bit less than me. About half, I'd say. And Nathan threw a pretty generous fucking amount. So I'd say we had about two grams here on this piece of paper. And I'm looking down at the table, and we're all, we just have this smirk on our faces. We're like, well, what should we fucking do? We opt to try to just make a giant snake and drop it. Which at first, we did make one giant snake, but we quickly realized that it was too long, and we needed to break it into two. So we split this into two giant snakes that were about a gram of concentrate each. Now I'm getting really excited. I'm happy. I'm like, fuck yeah. We're finally getting a sizable dab here. I'm getting excited to get baked. I'm like, you know, this might really do it for me. Especially considering my bud tolerance was a bit lower at this point. Because as I'd mentioned earlier, I wasn't really smoking as much at this point. I was doing hella blow. And I wasn't super geeked at this point. So I thought this dab was going to ruin me. But either way. We heat up this banger until it is molten hot. And it's smoking so hard, we realize pretty quick, we're like, we might want to try to clean this, you know? At least get it a little cleaner. So Nathan runs inside. We abort mission. Nathan runs inside, cleans up the banger a little bit, comes back out. He did his best, but goddammit, it it wasn't much cleaner. It was still smoking when we heated it. So at that point, we just said, fuck it. Now, Nathan was first up to bat, and we took the first snake that we'd made and dropped it in. We dropped it in as he was preparing to hit it, you know, he started ripping it hard, and we got about a half to a little more than a half of the snake in on the first hit. Now, the whole entire banger was sizzling. It sounded like boiling fucking water in there. I don't know what was wrong with this fucking shatter, but it really was dookie. It was terrible. This shit was, it was probably a combination of the temperature and the low quality concentrate, but my God, it was like a nightmare. It was terrible. It almost like the smell it emitted. I remember I smelled it and it was like, you know, when you drive past road construction and you've got that tar in the road and you just smell it and you're like, oh, that smells like a fucking elephant just shit here, you know? It's pretty comparable to that, I'd say. A fairly comparable smell. So I'm like, yo, that smells like elephant shit, but I'm in it to win it. I'm way, it's way too late to go back. He hit it, so I have to hit it. Now he rips it and I'm looking at him and he is sweating, dude. I'm talking literally his face is beet red, his eyes are watering, and he takes his mouth off this fucking rig and exhales a giant ass cloud and just starts coughing a lung up. Now I take the torch and start reheating it and it's Dan's turn now. I ended up going last on this roto. So Dan starts hitting it, right? I'm heating it up a little more for him, and he starts ripping it, and Nathan is literally coughing a lung up. I'm worried this dude's gonna fall out of his chair. He's leaning forward, and he's hanging onto the table to, like, push himself up, and he is coughing a fucking lung up. He hasn't even been able to say a single word yet. So now Dan takes his hit, and he's absolutely zonked. This man is gone. He takes his rip, and he lays back and starts coughing along up too. And at this point, I'm scared. We got two soldiers down. They just finished the first snake collectively, right? Those two, I'm now on to solo the second snake potentially if I want to, you know? This could get crazy. 
So I heat up the rig a little more, and, you know, eventually... Nathan came to a little more and offered to heat it for me because I, I was kind of having a hard time. I was like, I, I don't know, dude. It, it literally lit on fire when I was heating it. I remember having a very difficult time because there was so much goop left in it, but I was trying to heat it more because it also wasn't ripping enough. You know, I was like, dude, we got to heat this more. There's so much in there. So it got a little rough, but eventually I got it going and I start ripping it. I drop a little bit of my snake in there, maybe not quite half of it, because there was still a lot left in the banger. So I drop maybe a quarter to a third of my snake in, and I'm ripping this thing, and oh my god. The elephant shit smell was accurate. It was just like the taste. This was probably some of the most rancid concentrate I've ever hit. Absolutely disgusting. Normally you know, low-grade to mid-grade concentrates. It it might not have a flavor to it, but it might just taste rough. This was rough, but it also had a flavor. The flavor, however, was not good. The flavor was actually the worst thing I've ever inhaled in my life. So I'm going to go ahead and say, right now, don't call me a bitch for this. But I started coughing so hard, I started crying. Nathan had to bring tissues out to me. I put the rig on the table, and I'm coughing a fucking lung up. I'm sitting there, and I'm like, holy shit, Nathan. I can't fucking do this. I'm sitting in his garage, and I can't stop coughing, bro. I damn near can't breathe I'm coughing so hard. Now, I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was a combination of the drip from the Coke and the the giant hit that I'd just taken. But I'm sitting in this chair. Right? I'm sitting there, and I cough so hard. I'm sitting there coughing so hard that I fucking puke on myself. Now, I'm not talking like a little like, uh, no, I'm talking like I full-on vomited on myself. Now, I'm super lucky that it literally only got on me. It didn't get on the chair. It didn't even get on the floor. It didn't get on anything but me. But Nathan comes back out and sees me like this, and he's laughing his ass off. And Dan was still sitting with me in the garage while Nathan ran inside real quick, and he's laughing his fucking ass off, right? And he's like, oh, let me get you a water, buddy. And I'm sitting on the couch, and I'm like, oh, fuck. Fuck, man. And Nathan is just, everyone's laughing there. I'm even laughing at this point. I'm like, what the fuck do I do? He's like, well, I might have like a pair of sweatpants or something you could throw on, bro. But I I don't know, man. So I'm like, could you look for me? I promise I'll bring him back, man. So he goes upstairs. He goes back inside, you know, wherever the fuck he went to his house. And he grabs some pants and he brings them back out. Now... Nathan and I are far different sizes, so he brings out these tiny-ass fucking, like, uh, he, Nathan's a very thin guy, bro, I'm pretty sure he brought out, like, some goddamn 30s, or, like, some 32s, and I'm like, bro, I don't fit in these, goddamn it, like, what, like, I don't fucking fit in these, man, you know, like, that, I can't do that, so, I'm like, dude, no, I can't, like, I can't wear that, bro, I, that's way too, that's far too thin for me, so, I'm sitting there covered in my own yak, and you know, at this point, I got some paper towels, Nathan had been kind enough to bring me a water, I'm kind of cleaning myself up a a little bit, but I realize I can't do too much cleaning up, I'm sitting in a garage, so I now have to drive back to the red roof, I'm like, you know what, guys, it was a cool dab, but now my head just hurts, and I'm covered in vomit, I wasn't even high, I'm pretty sure any chance I had of getting stoned got yacked out of me as soon as I puked. So I wasn't even stoned at this point. I had just wasted my money, which, by the way, he didn't charge me much. I paid, like, what, 15 or 20 bucks for the gram of this dookie shatter? Not really that bad, you know? Not the end of the world. But either way, I get back in my car, and luckily they were cool about it. They were laughing at me, but hey, I don't blame them, dude. That that was fuck. I yacked all over myself. But I get back in my car, and I drive back to the red roof, and I'm sitting there... And I can't figure out what to do with the clothes because the red roof I'm at apparently didn't have laundry. I'm like, what do you fucking mean? They're like, yeah, we don't have laundry right now. I'm like, bro, are you fucking kidding me? I remember asking like later in the week, like the next day I went and I was like, bro, where do I do my laundry? And they're like, we don't have it. And I'm like, fuck. So I had to throw my fit away, dude, because like I was in the red roof for a couple days and I was like, dude, I'm not going to let the puke soak in. Like I'm, I'm throwing it out. It was grossing me out. I'm not going to store that in my room. It's an L I have to get rid of it. But I got back to my room that night, right? I, I just, 
I was covered in yak. I felt like shit. Well, I guess that morning, not even that night. I got back to my room that morning, I should say, at like probably 8 a.m. And I just went back to my room and laid the fuck out, changed my clothes, took a shower, and knocked the fuck out, dude. I wasn't even fucked up at this point. I still had no weed, but I also wasn't stoned. I had just wasted money and puked on myself. So it was actually a giant L of a day. Hope you guys enjoyed the story of my complete L that I took. Drop a like if you enjoyed. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at GBLN420. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, gamers.